Well, hello, good people. I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing the hype about one or when 2.1, the latest open source text and image to video model. And I've just been recently testing it on ComfyUI. With that being said, it is available as a standalone app brought to you by their folks at Pinocchio. And apparently it can run on GPUs as low as five gigabytes. They even give us a breakdown of the various GPUs on what you can run. So you've got your usual 24 gigabytes to five. I'm on eight gigabytes. So it looks like I can do text to video and image to video with the 1.5. 3B model or 14B at 480p. Obviously, I think the 14B will take some time, but let's go ahead and try it out. Now, I do have a separate install video on Pinocchio. It's super easy. I'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure you check it out. But once you load up Pinocchio, you'll see when 2.1 here, we're just simply going to click on it. And then we just need to click download. These are the various things that it's going to install. We'll go ahead and click install might take a few minutes depending on your system. Once it's finished installing, you'll get a pop-up. We'll just call this WAN, one, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll go ahead and click install one more time. Then it'll finalize all the dependencies and everything else it needs. All right, looks like it's done. We're going to go ahead and click done here. And then on the very left, you'll have several options, text to video, image to video, advanced. There's a section for both text and image to video LORAs. We won't look at that today, but let's go ahead and try text to video since it's the smallest model. On the initial installation, it's going to download the models required, text encoders and all that stuff. So be patient. We're getting there. And there you go. Now I'm going to pop it out into a browser. So let's take a look at the interface. There's a drop down here for the configurations. So you can select the model that you want to use here. So we're going to do text to video for now. And you could choose between an 8-bit or 16-bit text encoder. And there's a few options here for Sage Attention, which basically can help speed up generation, but I'm going to leave it on the default. Let's just go ahead and try it. So we'll do text to video. I'll try image to video later. And I'm going to put in a prompt here. We'll just do 480. Number of frames, 81. That gives us about five seconds. We'll leave it at that. Inference steps, 30. There's some advanced options as well, but we'll leave it for now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and generate, stop the recording and come back and report to you how long it took. A few moments later. All right, so it took 437 seconds roughly, which is about seven, seven and a half minutes. Bear in mind, this was the first run. Typically, your first run is longer. Other generations might be a little bit faster, but let's take a look at it. So the prompt was a gladiator walking through the battlefield. You can already tell parts of his armor isn't that great, but let's take a look at it anyway. And yeah, for a first generation, I mean, it got the gist of it, and we are using the smaller model. I'm sure most of you know by now that it takes a few generations to get a good one. But I think what we'll do now is try the image to video. So it looks like I have to relaunch it to do image to video. So we're going to cancel this. And then we'll select image to video. Again, if this is your first initial launch, you'll have to download dependencies, the models. On the left, you're going to see the requirements, 20 gigabytes worth of stuff. Previously, the text to video was only five gigabytes. Okay, so now we see the model, the 8-bit model is already loaded for us, which is recommended for low VRAM GPUs. Same with the text encoder. Everything is cool. We're going to put an image in here. We're going to input the prompt. And once again, we'll leave all the default settings. I'm going to go ahead, generate this and come back. 40 minutes later. <laughs> About 43 minutes later to generate this image to video. I don't have the patience for waiting 40 minutes. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Looks pretty good looks pretty good. So definitely image to video worth it if you have the GPU A. And if you notice, even though it's not raining, look at the uh, wipers. They're actually going. That's really cool. 
and I like how it kind of changed angles. That kind of movement for this type of shot is in common for these open source models. Hey, is there even a guy in the... Yeah, there's a dude in here. <laughs> That's cool. So far, what I would say, the image to video looks really good. So I think what I'm going to do is hop on over to Tensor Art. I have some credits to burn. And uh, yeah, I'll do up a little workflow that you guys can check out. Now I'm sure if I change some of these settings, lower steps, lower quality, I can speed it up. But how much more generation time am I going to save with an 8 gigabyte VRAM GPU? Probably not that much. So for those of you that have 12 gigabytes and up, I think if you want something easy to install, no hassle, this is a great option. Otherwise, if you have a lower end GPU, then you have to have a lot of patience. As always, my friends, so let me know what you think in the comments below and make sure to check out the follow-up video when I do this in Comfy UI. Until that next one, I'll see you when I see you.